Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the Mysidia Post. Today we're going to be looking at a little bit of metadata. So um, I did this a little bit in Opus 8, but what I've been doing is I've been collecting a lot of information from FFDEX and other sources, compiling some lists and some information, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've been seeing so far in Opus 9. Now it's going to be a little less of a competitive look because there just haven't been that many major tournaments yet. But we do see uh, a definitely a trend of what type of decks people are playing and uh, what kind of cards are being tried out. So without further ado, let's get into the details. One more thing I want to mention is how I collect the data. So uh, every night before I go to bed, I take a look at some of the FF deck results and I'm just tracking every single tournament on uh, an Excel sheet. I look at all the lists, I record what was recorded in the top four, the top eight, and I also record what list won the actual tournament. Um, I also have a second spreadsheet going where I'm tracking tournaments that are larger than 18 players uh, so that we get a certain amount of rounds in Swiss and we get like a little more consistency to the data. So if, if a deck has done very well in a larger tournament, then we're going to take it a little more uh, seriously when we look at the, the list. Uh, so I'm also compiling that as well right now, but it's not quite ready to use yet as again, we haven't had that many tournaments. So we'll have another video when that comes up, maybe after Gen Con, we'll have a pretty good look at, you know, what decks w were successful and which ones weren't. Um, but otherwise, today we're just going to be looking at literally everything that I've been able to find that has to do with Opus 9. Okay, so I'm going to bring up a chart on the screen here in a second and you'll be able to see it. And we'll just take a look at, at what it's saying. So these are all of the decks that we've seen so far in tournaments. Uh, you'll see that uh, from the left side you have the names of the decks. And then on the bottom it's the number of times that it's been showing up in the top cut of a tournament or just the top listing of a tournament. Uh, so every line is two times appeared, so if you look at the halfway, that's that's one time. So for example, Fire Lightning, Ice Fire, non-returners, uh, Wind Lightning, Ice Wind, those are all, uh, we've seen them once in a tournament, whereas Chocobos, we've seen two Chocobo decks so far in lists. If you look all the way down to the bottom, with a whopping 10 times uh, appeared, we have Water Wind, so that shouldn't be surprising anyone. And then in second place, Mono Ice, third place, we've got Earth Wind uh, appearing eight times. So again, those are all three of those are pretty expected. We've got Returners right after that, and still a lot of people playing uh, Earth Fire FF7, and I think that's partially it's a very popular Final Fantasy. It's a good entry level deck, uh, and it's just a it's a powerful deck. So we're still seeing a lot of that. Um, if you look at the next we listing, we have Mono Water, and again powerful from the last Opus got a couple tools we're gonna see stuff like that um, so there's nothing too surprising yet uh, still seeing some water fire ff9 still seeing your classic mono decks um, and then we do have some rogue decks that have appeared and we'll talk about those in a little bit but for the most part the meta hasn't changed that much we're seeing a lot of decks that already existed and people are just slotting in opus 9 cards um, you might notice further down the list that we have cadets at uh, three appearances that would be something new that's coming out and we also have ice earth flan listed and just ice earth so we've, we're starting to see ice earth decks that don't use the whole flan package that aren't doing that mono ice plus shantoto deal they're starting to play more into um, mixing the colors instead of like a very ice focused deck and one of the reasons they do this is because you play your sephiroth make someone discard two and then you play gabranth search a sephiroth make them discard two with shadow flare special uh, and that seems to be a pretty powerful combo so far all right so what i just showed you is how often the decks are being played but how often are they actually winning we can take a look at that and i'll, I'll put the results up on the screen but you should note that we just don't have very much data yet it's just a little bit of a preview so most decks on this list all have um, one win you can see the returners has two wins and then down at the bottom water wind has uh, seven wins which is just great love playing against that okay so i also mentioned some uh rogue decks and i know i can't just throw that word out there without talking about it a little bit so we're not really seeing anything too crazy sorry to disappoint uh we've seen some ffl three color decks which are kind of running the warrior light or warrior of darknesses with uh like searches and stuff and we all, we're also seeing the uh return of like all ex bursts decks 
Um, and then the one other n noteworthy thing that we've seen is more mill decks, and we've seen that in general with Water Wind uh, playing a lot of mill, uh, lots of extra Valforce because of Porum, you're doing a lot of activating, you're doing a lot of recuing, uh, but there's also been some pretty dedicated stall and mill decks that are not trying to deal damage, not trying to play forwards, they're just trying to use as many summons and EX bursts as possible, uh, and then just very slowly mill you into the ground. Um, so we've seen a few of those pop up as well. But in terms of uh, any like new viable rogue deck, I don't know if we've seen anything yet, um, but we'll, we'll keep collecting data. In, in the future, I am going to be posting more videos like this. We're going to be doing some more competitive meta roundups as well as some casual stuff. And I also will be going into more of the meta decks and doing some deck techs and talking about things like that. Uh, but for now, I just wanted to get some content out there. I wanted to kind of, uh, you know, give you guys some information on how the uh, the meta is shaping up so far and uh, just go from there. Thanks for watching the video, everybody. Please continue to support us by liking, commenting, and subscribing. You can also check out my articles at themesidiapost.com. And if you need any FFTCG products, then look no further than Cards of Evilies. Finally, I'd like to thank FFDEX for making such an awesome site that I use every single day. You make sure you go and check out their Patreon, and uh, we'll see you next time. I just want to take a moment to thank uh, Gatorade for sponsoring my channel. No, I'm just kidding. I have like 14 subscribers. They don't they don't have a sponsor.